Hello and welcome to module nine, the HSRP. Well, as you can see, I have a packet tracer opened up and I want you to um, open up your packet tracer and we're going to do HSRP. We're going to see how we're going to create a redundant gateway, right? So grab, just to let you know, grab a 29, uh, 2901 routers, one here and one there. Then you can grab uh, 2960 switches, one there, three PCs, and all street through cables. Connect the cables to any port. It doesn't matter. This port, but it, this one to G00. This is to G00. This is to G01. And this is to 01. It doesn't matter which port you connected here. Of course, on the PCs, you want to connect them to um, port, the fast Ethernet port. Okay? Um, you can write, I just wrote down the, this whole thing is going to be 192.168.10.0 slash 24 network. And this network on the other end is going to be 172.16.0 slash 24 network, right? This default gateway is going to have dot one and this default gateway is going to have dot two. All right. And the PC is going to have dot three. In fact, I did that already. And I want you to go in here and type that in right once he's going to have dot two um the mask is going to be slash 24 okay and this is your default gateway 172.16.100.1 actually it's dot one and um anyway so if it's going to go this way it, if we lose the connection here going to be able to be rerouted this way i guess uh but the problem is this we're going to have to run the standby on this side too but anyway i'll show you that you can actually go through this router this way to get directly to your default gateway you'll go right in here and you'll be able to connect anyway you can do this in the LAN, but we'll do the we'll do a different exercise um in the class activity where you can do with the Inter VLAN routing too. You don't have to have multiple routers either. But anyway, so configure your router. I'm sorry, your PC to here. All right. We're going to create a virtual interface. This is where we're going to do HSRP. Okay. We're going to the virtual interface. That means the PCs is going to be given the IP address in this case. Here it is 10.3 is the virtual interface. This is going to be dot one. This is going to be dot two. Right. And the virtual gateway is going to have the dot three. All right. So this PC is going to be dot four. This PC right here is going to be dot five with the same virtual router interface, gateway interface, right? So they send their, when they want to ping PC2, they send their uh, ping echo request to the 10.3, which is the virtual gateway. And the virtual gateway will pick who's active. And the active one will send the information directly. All right, so do all of that. And when you're all done, let's go to router one and let's start configuring it. All right, this is what you do. All you have to do, okay, say now after it's been booted. Enter, enter, type EN, config T. All right, as always, no IP domain. Look up. All right. Let's give it a host name or one. All right. Let's go to the interface G0 slash zero. That's this interface right here. And let's give it the IP address 192.168.10.1 with a mask up 255.255.255.0. All right. Let's. Um, Let's do a stand by one and the IP, which is the virtual interface is going to be 192.168.10.3. Right, so that's the virtual interface. Now I want to make this router to be the active one. So I'm going to say stand by one and I'm going to give it a priority. Let's say 150, right? Now it won't be the active unless I say standby one and preempt 
right? So they can start the election, and both routers will elect him to be because uh, the um, <clears throat> the active gateway because he has a higher priority. All right. Whoops. Misspelled standby. Here we go. Stand by by. <laughs> Can't do that. All right, so there you go. All right, um, I'm going to do a no shut on the interface to activate it. Let me go to this interface and activate that. Interface G0 slash 1. And I'm going to give it the IP address 172.16.100.1 with a mask of 55, 55, 255.0. I do a no shutter on that as well. All right, now I gotta move to router two and pretty much, see, now it became active. And this is, first it went to standby and it became active. It doesn't, because I haven't even configured this guy yet. All right, so you can configure him now. So let's configure him. If I make this router higher than 150 as a priority, all right, so let's say no. It will become the active. So I'll do enable config t no IP domain lookup and the host name of R2. All right, let me go to the G0 slash zero interface and give it the IP add 192.168.10.2 with a mask of 555.255.0. All right, I'm going to say stand by 1, 192.168.10.3. Give it the virtual interface. And I'm sorry, you have to say, repeat the command. You have to say IP. All right. Once you're done with that, and if you don't type any priority or anything else after that, that means it has a priority of 100. Now, because R1 has a priority of 150, he's going to stay as the active server, and he stays as standby. Okay, we'll leave him as a standby. Now, let's configure the G01 interface. Uh, interface G0 slash 1, and it's going to have IP add. 172.16.100.2, right? We're 255.255.255.0, and we'll open that up as well. All right, that's it. So now we are ready for testing. So let's go to PC, PC0. All right, I'll go to the, let me close this right here, and I'll go to the command prompt, and I'm going to ping PC2 address, which is the dot three. So let me uh, do ping 172.16. Dot... Wait a second. Let me just double check what this address is. Okay, this cannot be dot two because this is dot two. So we need this to be dot three, right? There's one, two, three. Good. So let's close that and go back to PC0 and ping 172.16.100.3. Let's see what happens. All right. So timed out and then it replied. Good. So let's actually see which route did it take. Did it go through here or did it go through here? And the way to know that is you type tracer. So tracer at 172.16.100.3. All right, it says it took the 10.1, right? So it took here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this link, and we should be routed through here now automatically, right? Because the PC now sees that this is the active one, and it will automatically go there. So... Click right in here in the space area first, so you don't delete anything else. And then go and click on the X and remove this link and click back on the arrow. 
And now click on router two to see what happens. See, now it's that it's speaking and bingo, it became active. You see that? Router two became active. Now I'm going to do the pinging again. So if you go down to the bottom, hit the upper arrow key once, twice. Let's ping. Let's see if it's going to go through. Should be able to go through. Um, all right. I know what the problem is because now he is not configured with the default gateway here. It should be dot two, right? Because we didn't do HSRP on this side. Okay, anyway, so let me try that again. Hit the upper arrow key. It should be able to respond to you now. It's not this problem, it's this guy here. Okay, so is it responds, right? And now if you do a tracer, as you can see, let's do tracer. We see that it's taking dot two first instead. All right. So if you do another HSRP here, they'll be able to communicate. All right. So as you can see, we have a redundant router. This is going to be sitting as um, one of well, it's not going to be sitting as one of them is sits as standby, and the other one is going to be um, the active one. If you use the GL GBLP, both of them will be used. You know, they'll toggle between each other depending on who has less traffic. And if one goes down, the other one takes over immediately. That's probably another protocol we should take a look at. All right, so that's it. Save your uh, packet tracer file and upload that as homework. And I'll see you on the next video.